In this session, we'll look at a quick way to graphically display the locations of corridor overrides. On my screen, I've got a sample corridor model. Let's zoom in and we'll do a quick tour. This corridor was built from an alignment called Main Street. That alignment has a corresponding finished grade profile called Main Street FG. These two components were leveraged along with a couple of assemblies to build this corridor model. Generally speaking, I'm using this assembly on the left to model everything leading up to this widening area. And then this assembly is used in the widening area and then remains all the way through the end of the alignment. Let's take a quick look at the assemblies. The initial assembly is just a pair of simple lanes with curb and gutter and daylight. And then in the widening area, I'm introducing a new lane that is reverse pitched. This lane also includes a curb and gutter object that has a gutter slope matching the lane slope. So this curb and gutter is reverse pitched as well. Let me zoom out and we'll pan this up and take a look at the corridor. I have already created a top surface for this corridor model. If I select this, I can go to Object Viewer, and then we'll orbit this up, and I'll spin this around. And if I zoom in right here, you can see that I have a bit of a kink in my surface. This is the location where I'm transitioning from one assembly to the other. Here we can see the traditional curb and gutter, and then less than a hundredth of a foot away, I have reverse pitched curb and gutter. We can see the anomaly that that's causing. To correct this, I'm going to use a corridor override. Let me close the object viewer. Overrides allow us to modify specific subassembly dimensions at a specific assembly insertion. Let's take a look. I'm going to select the corridor by clicking on this assembly insertion just before the widening. And then I'll click to bring up the section editor. And then here in the section view, I'm going to zoom in on that right side curb and gutter. And then I'll click zoom to an offset and elevation to lock that view on screen. I will then click here in the plan view, and I'll zoom in so we can see where we are in the overall model. As you can see, we're at station 2 plus 25. If I click the forward arrow, I can jump forward one assembly insertion. This represents the last station having the original assembly. We can see that's station 2 plus 50. If I click the forward arrow again, this represents the first station having the new assembly with the reverse pitch curb and gutter. This also reads 2 plus 50 because this station is less than a hundredth of a foot away from the previous one. If I click forward again, we can see how that lane starts to widen. Let me back this up. So if I go back and forth between these two stations, we can see that change in the curb and gutter slope is what's causing my issue with the surface. So I'm going to go back to that last station with the original assembly, and I'm going to apply an override to this gutter slope. We'll make it 2%, essentially reversing its pitch. I'll do that by opening the parameter editor. Here I can see the name of the assembly used at this station. Let me click to expand this. I'll expand the right side. I'll expand the right side curb and gutter. Here we can see all the parameters associated with that subassembly. Currently the gutter slope is negative 2%. I'm going to click and change that to a positive 2% and I'll press enter. You can see I have applied an override to that dimension. We can also see that change on screen. Let's click to close the corridor parameters. And my top surface is not yet caught up with this change. I'm going to come up and click update corridor. This will rebuild the corridor and that surface. Let me click to close the section editor. If I zoom in, the contours look much better now. Let's select the surface. We'll bring this back up in the object viewer. I'll orbit this up. And if I spin this around, you can see this looks much nicer. In fact, if we look very close right here, we can see that gutter slope is now transitioning across a 25 foot distance. At this assembly insertion, it's negative 2%, transitioning to a positive 2%. So, I have successfully applied a corridor override. Let me close the object viewer. I'll press escape and I'll zoom out. Now that I've applied an override, how can I find it again if I need to? Well, traditionally we can find overrides by going to the corridor properties. If I select the corridor, I'll click to bring up corridor properties. Here on the parameters tab, if I come down to the region that I'm interested in, I can move down to the overrides column, and if I click the ellipsis button, I can see any stations containing overrides in this region, and you can see there's the one that we created. Let me click Cancel, and I'll click Cancel again. Another way to find overridden station locations is by using the Section Editor. The corridor is still selected. Let me click to bring up the Section Editor. And if I move to the left of the Station List and open this menu, I can choose Overridden Stations. This restricts the Station List to overridden station locations only, and currently we just have the one. Let's close this, and I'll return to the model. What I'd like to do is show you how we can display these overridden station locations graphically. We'll do it through the use of a corridor style. If I select this corridor and come over to the Properties palette, we can see that it has a Code Set style assigned. 
the code set style controls the appearance of points, links, shapes, feature lines, render materials, things like that. This corridor also has an assigned corridor style. Let me click to open this and I'll choose Create Edit. I will then click to edit this current style. Here on the Display tab, we can see that all of the components of this style are currently turned off. One of these is called Parameter Override Stations. I'm going to click to make these visible, and then we'll change the color to something that stands out. I'll choose a nice bright orange, and I'll click OK. And then I will change the line weight to something heavy, maybe 0.6, and I'll click OK. Before I jump out, take a look at some of the other components we can display. Region boundaries, geometric override stations, assembly insertion stations. Feel free to experiment with some of these other items when you get a chance. For right now, I'm going to click OK, and then I'll click OK. I'll press Escape to deselect, and we can now very easily see this or any other assembly insertions containing overridden values. So if you're working with a corridor that leverages overridden dimensions, or if you just want to verify that a corridor does or does not contain overrides, try adjusting the corridor style. With just a couple mouse clicks, you can easily display any overridden stations contained within a corridor model. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.